In this lecture, we need to finish up the material on the lymphatic system. We've been through everything except for the thymus. Remember that the uh, immune system, the uh, lymphatic system includes both that lymph drainage system and the lymphocyte producing organs. The lymphocyte producing organs we've already talked about include, or the tissues that we've talked about, include the uh, diffuse lymphatic tissues and lymphatic nodules that are found along your mucous membranes in the body. It includes uh, clumps of lymphatic uh, or lymphatic nodules that are found in the tonsils, pyres patches of the ileum of the small intestine, and the appendix. Also includes encapsulated organs we know as lymph nodes, and it includes the spleen, those organs we've already covered. So this is the last of our uh, lymphatic system organs we need to cover today, the thymus. Location of the thymus, it's located immediately behind the sternum in the space between the two lung cavities and kind of above the heart, right, in the upper part of the thoracic region behind the sternum. Uh, that general region between the two pleural cavities, between the lung cavities, is known as the mediastinum. The mediastinum includes the heart, most of the blood vessels, your esophagus and trachea travel through the mediastinal region, but the thymus is right there in that mediastinum right up in the front. It is not within a body cavity. Many of your other organs we talked about are inside of body cavities of uh, the thymus is not within a body cavity. That mediastinum region is not within a body cavity. The, uh, it includes the heart that is in the pericardial cavity, uh, but the mediastinum is not a cavity. The developmental origin of the uh, thymus is in the wall of the pharynx. There are several organs that have their origin in the wall of the pharynx from the embryo including the, uh, well, the thyroid gland comes from basically the, kind of the center of the tongue location, the floor of the mouth, and migrates down to the thyroid location. The uh, tonsils kind of stay where they are in there. They're part of that pharyngeal lining also. But parathyroid tissue and thymus tissue come from the wall of the uh, posterior part of the embryonic pharynx and migrate away from the lining of the pharynx down into deeper locations. The parathyroid tissue ends up on the back of your thyroid gland. Your thymus tissues migrate down to a lower position. Um, in an illustration of this, let's say this is the wall of the pharynx here, starting with, the, well, we'll do the oral cavity up here, and then would be the uh, pharyngeal pouches of the embryo here. Making that a little bit small, I guess, but uh, anyhow, there are positions here in the back of the, uh, this would be the third pharyngeal pouch and the fourth pharyngeal pouch here, I'll indicate those with blue dots. These tissues migrate from their position on the wall of the pharynx down into the final position of the thymus. These tissues proliferate as they migrate and then become uh, the upper and lower portions of this side of the thymus and the upper and lower portions of this side of the thymus. So you've got tissues that come around from both sides moving into position to establish the thymic tissue uh, of the adult. All right, the uh, thymus it's made of two separate lobes. They are each contained with their, within their own connective tissue capsule. Um, they get larger through your younger years as children grow. It increases in size with the growth, but they peak in the adolescent years. After that, you begin to see an involution, a regression of the thymic tissue. It becomes eventually replaced with fat. It is very, very small in the aging and does not have a lot of functional tissue left in the, uh, in the thymus. Uh, next, we're going to show you a picture from the book that shows you basically the same structure, but its position in the body from the 
the book. Here we see the picture from your textbook showing the position of the thymus between the two lung cavities in the upper portion of the thoracic region. Notice that it's made of two separate lobes, a left lobe and a right lobe. Uh, the next topic we need to take up with, the, uh, with regard to the thymus and uh, comparing it to some other organs is the concept of stroma and parenchyma. The stroma is the uh, network of uh, fibers and such that support the active tissue of the organ. So it's kind of the framework of uh, supporting tissue. The parenchyma, and by contrast, are the cells that are the active functional part active functional cells that are within the organ supported by that framework. Important terms that you should know, stroma and parenchyma. Now, we bring this up now because we want to contrast the lymph node and the spleen type of stroma with that that's found in the thymus. In the uh, lymph node and the spleen, we had cells that were called reticular cells It's a modified form of a fibroblast cell. It produces fibers, but it produces what we call reticular fibers. So on the outside of a reticular cell, you would have the formation of reticular fibers that extend out away from that cell. So we'll put a few of these reticular cells over here so you can kind of see what we're talking about. And then they, they produce these fibers that form an interconnected network to help form this framework for the tissues in a lymph node or in the spleen. You'll find these. Some other tissues as well, but specifically here we want to think about the lymph node and the spleen to compare it to what's going on with the thymus. The thymus is different. So, this makes up the stromal composition on the inside of a spleen or lymph node tissue. The parenchymal tissues within the lymph node or spleen primarily we're thinking about lymphocytes there. So there's lots of lymphocytes supported within this framework There may also be some macrophage cells or neutrophils in here as well, but uh, primarily we're looking at lymphocytes distributed throughout that, that tissue in a, a spleen or lymph node example. Now, in the thymus, things are a little bit different. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about the capsule for a minute. We did have capsule and trabeculae in both the uh, lymph node and the spleen tissue, so this, this is the outer surface of collagen is about the same in a uh, thymus example. There's the outer capsule and these are inroads of connective tissue, that same kind of collagen that makes up the capsule. We, we call these trabeculae, right? So we can divide the, uh, each lobe, each of the two lobes, the left and right lobe of the thymus can be divided into what we call lobules. So here we see three different lobule regions within the thymus. Inside of that, the supporting tissue that makes up uh, the inside of each lobule here 
is made up of what we call epithelial reticular cells. And the epithelial reticular cells are cells that have a large cell body and then they have dendritic extensions from the cells. They do not produce fibers, but they have these dendritic extensions that reach out from one cell to the next to make up this framework for supporting the parenchymal tissue. These epithelial reticular cells are the cells that came from the pharyngeal lining of the embryo and migrated out away from there to form the thymic tissue. Now within that, you, I won't draw more of the uh, epithelial reticular cells, but over here in this lobule I'll show The, uh, the outside margin out here around the, the edges of each lobule has a much more dense arrangement of lymphocytes than does in the middle. And so we refer to the outer portion of each lobule as the cortex of the lobule and then the middle of the lobule will have a less dense arrangement of lymphocytes. That center region is called the medulla. So here on the outside we have the cortex, highly populated with lymphocytes and supported by epithelial reticular cells. High density of lymphocytes in the cortex and then in the, in the medulla region things are a little more sparse noticeable difference as you transition from the cortex region to the medulla region. Also within the medulla region are some specialized structures we call thymic corpuscles, also known as Hassel's corpuscles. Thymic corpuscles within the medulla, which are simply clusters of epithelial reticular cells that uh, do not have the dendritic expansions, they're just clusters of cells that uh, aggregate in there. They look, a, to me, a lot like a, a knot in wood when you look at them under the microscope there. And we'll try to have a, a view of those for you here in a minute. Let's go ahead and label some of this. On the outside we have the capsule. Inside here we have uh, Trabeculae. Here's a single trabecula. These are my epithelial reticular cells. This outer portion here is the cortex. The center in here is the medulla. And in there we have our thymic corpuscles. <clears throat> and remember that in, in both the uh, cortex and the medulla there will be epithelial reticular cells forming that stromal component within the lobule. Outside of each lobule we have the stroma, the supporting structure is made of collagen, normal, uh, dense, irregular connected tissue that surrounds and makes up the uh, trabeculae within the thymus. The epithelial reticular cells, I'm going to draw another illustration over here now to kind of show what's going on with them. Uh, so you'll have one cell that has dendritic extensions outward just put three, three extensions on this one, and at the end of each one, this is a single cell here, epithelial reticular cells, it'll make contact with another cell that has its own uh, connections elsewhere. So there's another epithelial reticular cell, there'll be another one down here, and its extension reaches out and makes contact with that one, and this one might make contact up here with this one, and so you have a whole network of epithelial reticular cells to make that framework for the lymphocytes within the thymus. 
So in the thymus, you have epithelial reticular cells making up your inner stroma. And in a spleen or uh, lymph node, you'll have reticular cells making reticular fibers that support that inside portion, make up that stroma. Next topic we need to deal with regarding the thymus is T-cell processing, so sometimes referred to as T-cell maturation or T-cell education. Uh, the T-cells are lymphocytes, the many lymphocytes that you find within the lobules of the thymus. The uh, T-cells, this, this type of lymphocyte, has its origin in the bone marrow where most of our other blood cell types are formed, so we produce some of our T-cells in that bone marrow. They're released into the bloodstream, and some of them then, during your, your younger years and embryonic development especially, migrate up to the thymus and become established within the thymus tissue. So within that thymus tissue then that we undergo this process of T-cell processing. Uh, these T-cells are going to be important in the immune functions of the body and they have to be processed in a way that they recognize foreign material to give you antibody defense, or not antibody, but uh, immune defense against uh, foreign antigens that might come from bacteria and viruses and such. And we also want to make sure that these cells are not active against our own tissues, so they don't think that our own tissues our foreign materials and initiate immune responses to our own self tissues. The next thing we need to do is think about the structure of the overall uh, thymus. So again, I'll put up my drawing showing the uh, outer capsule of the thymus here and then put in some trabeculae to show the uh, Division of the lobules within a thymus. So here's a lobule, here's a lobule here. Remember that we had within the thymus a cortex region and a medulla region. So we have the outer cortex over here, the medulla in the center of each lobule. These lymphocytes that are present out here are T cells that need to undergo a maturation process. In this outer cortex region, they interact with the epithelial reticular cells here in such a way that they develop a recognition system or they are ensured to have a recognition system that will help us to identify antigens that are present in the body. So we're recognizing foreign material this is called a positive selection process out here. After they have achieved that ability and they can recognize foreign materials, they'll be efficient in identifying foreign antigens, they'll recognize antigens, they move to the medulla region and in this medulla region they undergo the second stage of their processing uh, so that we don't recognize our own tissues as antigens or foreign materials. So we're recognizing self versus non-self. We want to make sure we can recognize non-self out here in the cortex, that stage of their education or processing, and then in the medulla, we want to make sure that they can recognize self as self and not initiate an immune response to our own tissues, the second stage there of our processing of T-cells or T-cell maturation, also called T-cell education. If these cells fail in either process, the outer cortex region process of recognizing foreign materials or the inner medulla portion uh, process where they're supposed to recognize self and not initiate an immune response against self, if they fail at either point, they are digested, they are removed from your uh, function here. So they, the, the materials that make up those T cells are broken down and recycled for other uh, functions. One last point here that I want to make, these cells, after they have been through both processes, the training process of both the cortex and the medulla, 
These cells are then put into the bloodstream and they're moved into what we sometimes refer to as secondary lymphatic organs. So they'll move into lymph nodes, they'll be put into uh, tonsils or other uh, diffuse lymphatic tissues possibly in the body. So anyway, they find another home where they will be able to uh, reproduce and make more of their own kind so they can wage these immune functions within the body to help defend you against foreign uh, bacteria, viruses, and so forth. In this slide of the thymus, we see part of a lobule. This right above up here is the uh, trabecula below. Here's uh, another trabecula down here. Um, the outer portion of each lobule is darker because of the more greater density of lymphocytes. The center has a lower density of lymphocytes and has hassles, corpuscles, or thymic corpuscles. There's one here, one here, smaller one there. So clusters of epithelial reticular cells that are gathered together in those dense spots called thymic corpuscles throughout the medulla portion of a lobule within the thymus. Here's another view of thymus, basically the same thing again, but here we have a bit of the capsule down here, and we see separation of the lobules with that connective tissue, those uh, trabeculae that extend from the capsule inward. And then we have darker regions of uh, lymphocytes around the margins, that's the cortex, and then lighter regions in the medulla portion of each lobule. And in the medulla, there's a nice example of a thymic corpuscle again there. There's some smaller ones scattered about in the medulla. Remember that these tissues are supported within the lobule by epithelial reticular cells. The capsule and the trabeculae, those are primarily collagen fibers made by fibroblasts. This is another slide of thymic tissue down in this region. This is cortex. Up in this region is medulla. This is the transition from cortex to medulla. All the dark purple dots in here are lymphocytes, T cells. And uh, this is a thymic corpuscle or Hassel's corpuscle. Uh, mixed in here, there are some cells with paler nuclei, and you can see some of the fiber-like extensions from some of those uh, epithelial reticular cells in there as well. 